Are you looking for the best vlogging cameras? In this video, we will look at some of the best vlogging cameras on the market. Before we get started with our video, we have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Starting at number 1. Panasonic Lumix GH5. This Panasonic is a standout performer when it comes to vlogging cameras. It has everything we look for such as ease of use, versatility, durability, and more. It also supports dual SD cards as well as headphones, HDMI, and external microphone inputs. The camera comes with a 20.3 megapixel micro four-thirds CMOS image sensor, which captures crisp images. The screen is a gorgeous 3.2-inch articulated LCD touchscreen that closes into the body for protection. It supports 4K video recording and has a 225 area autofocus. It also comes with Wi-Fi, NFC, and Bluetooth connectivity for external devices. Weighing a beefy 25.6 ounces, the camera is built with a magnesium alloy body. That means the camera is quite sturdy, but also heavy. There's a wealth of controls all around the camera body for adjusting the manual settings. While we love the crisp images, the LCD screen captures and the connectivity options, we still had a few nitpicks. Low light video is bright, but the picture is a bit grainy. Autofocus is also slow and wanders aimlessly at times and, since this is the heaviest camera on our list, it lost points for portability. If you plan on using this camera for hikes and other outdoor adventures, we'd recommend hooking it up to a tripod, as it's pretty hefty. At number 2. GoPro Hero 7 Black The GoPro Hero 7 Black may be the smallest camera on the list, but that doesn't make it any less mighty. This action camera is capable of shooting 4K video at 30 frames per second or 2K at 60 FPS, and it carries a 12 megapixel sensor. The optics are great, as the depth of field is quite deep. This means objects stay in focus whether close up or at a distance, without having to rely on an autofocus system. All GoPro accessories are proprietary, meaning you'll need an accessory simply to mount this to a tripod. That being said, GoPro has a ton of accessories that can make your product do just about anything, and they're all interchangeable, so once you buy into the ecosystem, all of your cameras going forward will be well equipped. The downside to the aforementioned depth of field is that you won't get the bokeh effect of a blurred background, which adds pop to videos. The display on the back of the camera doesn't flip around, so keeping yourself in the frame is a challenge. There's an app for your smartphone that allows you to adjust any setting and see yourself in the camera but that requires a second hand, which can be just as annoying as it is convenient. That said, given its price point and overall performance, the GoPro Hero 7 Black is a great entry-level option for anyone interested in upping their blogging game. At Number 3. Panasonic Lumix DMC G85 The Panasonic G85 performs just as well as the GH5 and is super lightweight and portable. The lenses from the two cameras are interchangeable as well, meaning you can pick up the G85 and upgrade to the GH5 later. While the G85 has a lot going for it, there are a few trade-offs. Images are less sharp, especially when the camera is in motion, and low-light video is more grainy. Although the G85 and the GH5 have similar accessories, they're not interchangeable, which is disappointing. If you start with the G85, you'll get a 16-megapixel camera with 49 autofocus zones. It shoots in 4K at 30fps and a maximum ISO of 3200. If you're on a tight budget, then this camera is a good choice. It performs well, is very portable, and it won't burn a hole in your wallet. At Number 4. Sony Alpha A6400 The Sony A6400 is a great little camera, with a body that is a little bigger than a typical point-and-shoot. With its interchangeable lenses, lightweight body, and great autofocus, there's a lot to love. This was also our best low-light performer. While low-light images were darker than the Panasonic GH5, it was less grainy. The autofocus can hold a tight focus on the subject even in low-light. If you plan to move around a lot in your videos, this might be a good camera to take with you, but only if you have a tripod. Stabilization in this camera is pretty much non-existent. It also features a 24-megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, which is capable of 4K video shooting with a 425-point autofocus. 
Add to that Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and NFC connectivity, and you've got a camera packs a lot into a small package. That said, there were a few drawbacks. Navigating the settings menu can be a headache. We're also not fans of the screen, which faces out when you fold it in. This simply leaves the screen prone to damage or scratching. However, the Z Fold system is more robust and stable than the typical rotating screen that lets you keep the screen in. What that means is, the stable folding system allows for more solid screen positioning as opposed to a more flimsy rotating screen that you'll find on other cameras. Overall, this is a great camera and our favorite of the three Sonys we tested. But the frustrating menu system, lack of touchscreen, and lack of stabilization pushed this one down to the middle of the pack. At number 5. Nikon D5600. The Nikon D5600 comes with a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor and an extended ISO range of 100 to 25,600. It's among the lightest DSLR cameras we tested, which made it the most portable and easiest to handle and store. It's also quite compact with a nice bright touchscreen that folds into the body. Image quality is good, but the video footage is limited to 1080p. This camera isn't the most user-friendly, as the buttons are all over the place. They're on the right side, left side, top, and front. If you're looking for a camera that you can use one-handed, you may want to look elsewhere. Out of all the cameras we tested, this is the only one with a lens lock, which allows you to extend the lens so it's ready to shoot. One might argue that it's a good feature, designed to keep the lens safe, but it's just not user-friendly. Often during testing, we would forget that the lens needed to be unlocked or relocked when we were done. We found it to be more annoying than useful. The build is made of plastic, which isn't a bad material but it feels cheap and not very durable. While this camera is capable of capturing good video, Nikon falls short in terms of the customer experience, which knocked this camera down a few pegs. At Number 6. Sony Cybershot DSC-RX 100V. The Sony Cybershot RX 100V was the second of two point and shoot cameras we tested. It boasts a 20.1 megapixel 1 inch sensor and a 2.92x optical zoom. This little powerhouse is even capable of 4K video, albeit with a 5 minute limit. Because it's a point and shoot, it's small and very portable. What's more, the camera holds nice surprises like the pop up viewfinder and flash. The VCT SGR1 shooting grip, which connects with this camera, gives it a nice tripod base with buttons to zoom, record video, or shoot a still. However, like the other Sony cameras on this list, this one has a few shortcomings. There's no touchscreen and the screen itself doesn't fold in. The menu is also a bit of a pain to navigate with the five-way rocker switch. Image quality is good, but we noticed that, especially in outdoor testing, highlights get blown out, washing out the possibility of reading text on a page at a distance. That said, it's not a bad camera. It did fall toward the bottom of the pack, but that was because of the same faults that its siblings exhibited. At Number 7. Sony RX-02. The Sony RX-02 is one of two ultra-portable cameras we tested. Although this camera can fit inside your pocket, don't let the small size fool you. Not only is this camera durable, but there's also a flip up the forward-facing screen, However, similar to the other Sonys on this list, there's no touchscreen, which is a little bit of a bummer. The controls are hard to get used to as well, mainly because the buttons are so small. This makes it a little frustrating to use. Unless you attached Sony's VCT SGR1 shooting grip, we received one with our test unit, there's no easy way to switch between video and stills. Also, the low light performance was terrible and the price tag is pretty lofty. While we like the durable build and the flip-up forward-facing screen, the high price tag is a tough pill to swallow.